also you say in the book that um, people say, okay, you're talking about an invisible God, so you need overwhelming evidence yes. to prove he exists, but you say in a criminal trial that there's rarely, if never, overwhelming well, evidence. Well, yeah, you need like extraordinary evidence to prove an extraordinary claim. Well, every homicide is in some ways extraordinary, depending on how unusual it is. Not many homicides, actually, you might think there's a large number, but relative to population size, homicides are incredibly rare. And the kind of homicide can make it even rarer. Yet when we go to trial, we don't say, well, now what kind of evidence? No, you're going to use the same mundane forms of evidence you would use to do a petty theft. You know, it doesn't have to be extraordinary. It just has to be, is it beyond a reasonable doubt? Mm -hmm. And we do this all the time. Now, I think we need to be able to adopt that view of faith, not a blind faith that doesn't even know what the evidence is, and not an unreasonable faith that believes something in spite of evidence to the contrary, but a forensic faith that has to take a step of trust. I can't answer every question in the Christian worldview, but I've got enough evidence here to incline me in this direction, so that step of trust is very short mm. relative to, to what I already know. And that's what Jesus would say, because he spent 40 days with the disciples after the resurrection, giving them many convincing proofs. Why? Well, isn't the resurrection enough? No, he knew the heart of, of humans, and he knew that we needed to have those doubts answered, and he stayed around for 40 extra days giving convincing proof so that, yes, there'll still be a step of trust. This still seems crazy that I rose from the grave, but I've given you enough evidence to make your faith forensic.